Hey, my interwebs buddies. I've got my red lipstick on so you know that it's an important video. But to make it even more special, I'm going to put on some fancy cat ears. Aren't they pretty? Pretty, pretty, pretty. Anyway, what's so special? Well, if you've read the title, then you already know. But I'm finally doing my 250 subscriber Q&A. So let's get started with questions. Tanya, Evelyn, and Adam all kind of wanted to know the same thing. What inspired me to become a YouTuber? There were a few things that inspired me to want to become a YouTuber. I guess I was doing like YouTube-y stuff um, for years when I was little. When we got our first camcorder, I was recording everything and I was doing like weird skits with myself and with my friends and doing like house tours and made up TV shows. So when I heard about YouTube and that you could actually put your videos on there, I really wanted to do it, but I held off for years because I didn't think that I was gonna be interesting enough. I, I just held off, I just kept watching for years and years and years. It was once I found the group of people that most matched my personality and my sense of humor and my kind of outlook on life and saw that they're able to do it and it didn't matter like where they were from or what they looked like. They just did it. Uh, that was my final push that, you know what, I'm gonna do this. I feel good about myself, I feel confident in myself. So we're gonna start a channel, and I did. And then here I am. Matt wanted to know, how did I get to where I am? And Taekwon wanted to know, is it hard to reach that point? How I got to where I am, um, I'm honestly not sure. <laughs> I think the big bulk of it was doing the 100 Days Challenge when I first started my channel and talking to a lot of different people from around the world. We were each supporting each other and that really, really helped to grow my channel at first. And then it was um, meeting people through Twitter, through Facebook, through life <laughs> and talking about my channel and them checking it out, going to different events and um, you know putting out cards and, and again, talking to people there too. That's kind of how it built up. And honestly, I didn't think that I would ever get past like 100 subs. So hitting 250, you know, it's it's um, it's um an interesting feeling to know that there's 250 people that were interested enough in my life and what I'm doing to subscribe and, you know, keep up however, whenever they feel um, with what I'm doing. Dory wants to know, what color will my hair be next? Ah uh, yes, the great hair color debate. I am never quite sure what color that I'm gonna do my hair. Right now, it's this kind of bluish green color and I'm actually really digging it. So I'm just kind of letting it grow out and mix its way through my hair. I'm thinking either pink or red, but I haven't nailed it down yet. So, you know, don't be shocked if either one of those colors show up on my head anytime soon. She, Elliot, and Miles also wanna know what would be my dream video to make with an unlimited budget? If I had an unlimited budget and could go anywhere and do anything, I would go to London and do like the ultimate tourist video. I would want to do like all of the big places, all of, you know, the special little unknown places. I want to go everywhere and 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 do everything. Since I have no budget, then, you know, money's no object. I can go to like the swankiest places. That, oh boy, that would be fun. <laughs> also, one thing that I would like to do because I write poetry as well, is to take my poems and turn them into short films, like short pieces. I use a lot of imagery in my poetry because I'm big on, you know, I want to be able to see and feel um, whatever the, the narrator is going through when I'm reading a poem or a story. But I think it would still be fun to see it actually acted out. Mika asked, if you could do one job for the rest of your life, what would it be? If I could do anything for the rest of my life, I really honestly would want to be an actress. It's something that I've wanted since I was really little, just creating and being other people and telling stories. Though a more realistic goal, a more realistic job would be to get back to school and become a counselor and step up the work that I'm doing right now with my peer support so I can take it to another level and help people even more. Joe asked, do you think we'll see another video sharing platform take over YouTube in popularity? In all honesty, I don't know that something can be that big that it would overtake YouTube. It would be nice to see something that could be a good competitor to YouTube. I really was hoping that VidMe was going to be that thing, but sadly it is not, as VidMe is no more. You know, Vine kind of coming back, that might be something, but then again, YouTube and Vine were kind of two different entities doing different things. Not that you couldn't cross over. But um, I don't know. I hope there's something on the horizon. I mean, as the years come and go, I'm sure we're going to see, you know, little things popping up that are like VidMe. But um, 
I don't know if anything's going to surpass it in popularity right now. Guess we'll have to wait and see. Christopher asked, how do I fix my Samsung washing machine? Laura asked, what is your favorite, favorite hobby and you can't say YouTube? Since I can't say my favorite, favorite hobby, I will say my favorite hobby. I like to do uh, knitting and crocheting and I like reading and watching movies and, you know, really odd TV shows. Those are probably my big hobbies. Noelle wants to know, what was your largest motivation to start YouTube and what keeps you motivated? My main motivation to start my channel was to chronicle what I was doing, um, to share kind of what's in my head with other people and hope that they enjoyed it and that they found it interesting and maybe felt the same way too about, you know, subjects that I brought up. It has become much more than that, that now um, it's like a scrapbook and I share it with everybody, friends, family. So, you know, the people that aren't here can see what's going on and people can keep up with what I'm doing that I may not always get to talk to. It's also turned into a way for me to seek out fun things to do and interesting things to do and really kind of stretch my limits sometimes. Since I've started my channel, I have traveled to playlists by myself. I traveled to New York City by myself. Um, I've gotten to meet some really, really great people and made some really close friends. And all of that has just been incredible. So that's stuff that keeps me motivated that I have had that and and if I keep going, you know, that can just increase and I can have more fun things to do, more places to go, more people to meet, more, I, I don't know, just more in my life. I have an idea in my head of what I want this channel to be and I'm working towards that. It's kind of slow going, especially with the setbacks that I've had the past couple of months of just having no motivation and really having to kick myself in the ass to get back on here and and make videos and share them with everybody. Daniel asked, what do you think of Grana Banana's appealing brand on YouTube? Much better branding than mine, am I right? <laughs> what is the most awkward situation that's come up while vlogging and what's one piece of advice you would share with a newbie YouTuber? Oh, the awkward situations while vlogging, especially vlogging in public. I did my first like public filming thing in a Walmart that I was just walking around and commenting on things that I found. And yeah, people were stopping and looking at me and thinking that I was crazy talking to my phone. And uh, yeah, a couple of times having to retake something that I said because it got noisy or whatever. Uh, yeah, that that's always awkward. Public vlogging is always awkward. But I've kind of gotten over it that I'm like, whatever, I'm doing this. And you know, if you'd like, I can tell you about it and you can come watch it. And I guess my advice for a newbie YouTuber is, you know, you just got to do it. Just try a little bit of everything see what you're most comfortable with and what seems to be working and go with it. I'm still kind of figuring out exactly what works the best on my channel, but I also like doing the different series that I do because they're each different facets of um, who I am and, you know, what I think and what I do. And another little bonus tip, which, you know, it's more like do as I say, not as I do, is to be persistent, consistent, and really put yourself out there because, well, I definitely don't do that. Sam asked, where do you see your channel in five years? In five years, I would hope that my channel is still going, whether it kind of, you know, changed into something else or is still pretty much the same formats. I really want to keep doing this because it's fun and I really enjoy it. I just want to be doing more fun things, going to more fun places, meeting more people, just, having fun with life and having fun sharing it with the world. Sylvia asked, what channel or person would be your dream YouTube collaboration? I think anybody that knows me well enough could answer this question for you, but it would have to be uh, a three-way, well, four-way, I guess, collab with Dan, Phil, and Louise Pentland. They're the three that really pushed me and inspired me the most to do my channel, and I kind of want my channel to not be exactly like, but be in the same vein as like the things that they have and what they do. So that's kind of what I'm aiming for with, with this. I may not be hitting the mark, I'm sure. Some people would say I'm very far off, but I am um, trying and I would love to be able to have any or all three of them in a collab at some point in my life. That would be very, very exciting. And last but certainly not least, Yvonne asks, 
pizza, hamburger, or tacos. As much as I adore all three of those foods very much, I'm going to go with my always answer, which is pizza, because it's so super versatile. And you can have like a hamburger pizza or a taco pizza, and then you can just have a plain cheese pizza if you want, or you can have like sushi on a pizza or pineapple on your pizza, which is good, and I approve of it. Thank you very much for anybody that's wondering my opinion on that. <laughs> so there you have it. I've finally done my 250 subscriber Q&A, and I cannot wait for the next 250. I can't wait for the next 50. So, you know, keep it coming. Let's keep this train rolling. <laughs> If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to ring that bell so that you get notifications when my stuff goes live. I will see you guys tomorrow with another new video for Sammy Miss, and I love you. Bye!